بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم There is a hadith that says that one of the signs of the day of judgment is that people will walk past the the cemeteries and the, the, the places that, where the dead are buried and say that I wish I was there. They will wish they were dead, basically. And we see this so much in our time. There are so many people saying that they, they think death is better and they wish they would die. And there's high in, more high incidences of suicides around the world, but especially in the Western countries. And we can say that this maybe is because of lack of religion and lack of social support, but we even find it now amongst Muslims, surprisingly. There were suicide attempts and Muslims who wish for death. So what is the ruling and what is the idea of wishing for death? Is it better for us or is living better for us? And how can we deal with this issue? The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, taught us that we should not wish for death because we don't know what's going to happen afterwards. You know, maybe we, th- we think in our minds that maybe we have no future. We think that this is the end, you know, I, my life will never get better. Nothing will ever get better. Maybe you feel stuck. But the Prophet وسلم, said that, um, taught us to pray um, that, oh Allah, keep me alive so long as life is better for me. And take me in death when you know that death is better for me. This is the way of a Muslim, that if you must have uh, think of death, and if you really think death is better, put your trust in Allah, because He is the one who knows when death is better. And it's explained about the hadith that the reason why um, we're told this is because if someone is doing good deeds, they will increase in good deeds the more they live their lives. And if someone is a bad doer and they've committed many bad deeds, they might repent and they might become good. So living a longer life gives us more opportunities. And this is what life is for. It's for opportunities. And life is a gift that is a gift that unfortunately many of us don't particularly value. And even more unfortunate than that, people are stopping themselves and other people from living a fulfilled and purposeful life with strange ideas and um, things that just make people stop living their life. For example, it really annoys me when I hear that you can't do this when you're over 30, when you're 40, that means you have to just stay at home, no more getting married, no more having children. We have to leave things to Allah. People live their lives until Allah, uh, you know, people naturally are not able to do those things. Normally when they're dead, but for example, if someone um, has reached an age, which is normally I think maybe 70, 80, they're not going to maybe think about getting married at that time. But someone of 40 would do, they're young at that time. So we should stop putting these barriers on people living their life, trying to stop people living their life, when um, we, we, we're all supposed to have the opportunity to do that. And this is causing depression in people. I know that there was one woman who killed herself when she was 30. This happened earlier this year, I believe. It's because she didn't see the future, because people put all these uh, ideas about age and you know, you're not valuable when you're a certain age. And she was right. I mean, her ideas were right. Okay, we don't agree that she killed herself. That was not something we agree with. But, but the idea that people don't value people for certain about after a certain age, or don't value certain t- types of people, um, these are reasons why people are wanting to kill themselves. And I read that there's a high incidence of people killing themselves in the, amongst the elderly populations for this reason. The elderly do it. And people who are feeling oppressed, they don't have their rights, they will feel to do it. So if we can get rid of some of these underlying issues and hang-ups, 
maybe we can prevent some of these suicides and people wishing for death and just not being happy with the life that God gave them and that is a gift to us because life is a gift I mean we have many opportunities to do things in this life and an example of this is a hadith that tells us that um, there was two men, two sahabas and they both died within a year of each other one of them was very hard working in terms of worship so he was very active in worship um, and I think he did jihad and different things I believe he died as a martyr or in jihad or something like this um, so he died before the other one and he was doing more worship and ibadah than the, 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 the second one after maybe one year or two years I don't remember exactly if it was one or two years but then the second one died then the Prophet ﷺ explained that the second one had overta overtaken the first one he, w he was not doing as much worship or as many good deeds as the first one but when the Sahaba asked about this he explained that this year, this time period the extra time he had in this life he benefited from <coughs> I mean did he not do more sajdah? he prayed more, he had more opportunities to pray and he went through a second Ramadan Ramadan is a great time to gain more rewards and good deeds so this raised his station more than the, the other one so when we have longer life we have more opportunities to do good deeds and this is going to benefit us in the next life um, and it will raise our station because as Muslims we're supposed to believe that all the things that we do they can benefit us. They can also harm us if we do bad things and we make bad intentions and do bad deeds. But so long as even we're making good intention, the, the intention itself is a good deed. So we can just sit and make intentions all the day and be good, earning good deeds. And Allah is so kind and merciful. He actually rewards one good deed as if it was 10 or even more than that, into maybe even 70 or more I mean this is a hadith that when a person does a good deed Allah rewards the good deed with 10 azab 10 extras or until sub, um, 70 extras but if someone does a bad deed they get written only one bad deed and if they didn't do it they just thought about it it will be wiped out so we actually have the potential to have a lot of good deeds and to really benefit if we lived our lives in this way um, and the ruling on suicide of course is that it's not allowed, it's haram it's not allowed because it's taking a life even if you take your own life according to Islam, according to our belief we don't own our lives you know Allah owns our lives it's given to us and this is why you know even you know, for people who want to take their life, we also can't uh, give the life to ourselves or to anyone else as well. If we could, we would not allow our families and people who we care about to pass away. No, I mean, many people don't want their parents, their children, or others to pass away. But we can't do anything about that because we're not the controllers of life. Life is a gift and it's a test and it's an opportunity but Allah decides when someone is going to be taken away when their time has finished so we, we um, you know we have to give this uh, this give this to Allah that he is the one who gives and takes life and this is why killing is not allowed and this is why groups and people who put forward killing and saying that they think Islam is a terrorist religion that we can just harm people and kill we're not allowed to do that because we're not allowed to take um, innocent lives from people that Allah has given them life 
taking innocent lives is like is as ascribing partners to Allah, to God. <coughs> it's like saying, you are like Allah, you can give and take life. This is what Nimrod did in the Quran when he was uh, arguing with Abraham, peace be upon him. When uh, Abraham was telling him, um, trying to tell him about Allah and about belief and in God and trying to teach him the right belief and faith, Nimrod replied to him that he can give and take life. And then he brought a slave and he threatened to that he brought two slaves and he killed one of them and he let the other one go free. And he said, this is how I keep life and I, I cause death. So he was trying to claim that he was a god because of this. So the idea is that taking life is something that only god is supposed to do. We're not supposed to be involved in that. So whether it's our life or someone's life, life is life. We don't take it. It's sacred and valuable. I mean, now one of the signs of Day of Judgment as well, the end of times, is that there will be a lot of killing, a lot of bloodshed, and this is one of the signs of the end of time. And obviously it's not something that we're supposed to be proud of or involved in. We're supposed to value human life and our lives as well, as I was mentioning. So, yeah, this is, so the, our belief is that we don't wish for death and we don't try to take our own lives or other people's lives. And we continue to put our trust in Allah because if we are in a difficult situation where we think the future is um, is uh, not is just bleak and it's not it's not going to get better. Maybe it's going to get worse. Maybe things are going to get worse. Just ask yourself, do you know that? And normally, to be honest, at these times when we think like this, when we think that it's the end, that there's no more opportunities, that the door is closed, this is when you find that things change, and this is where I. This is the problem that I see with people who've killed themselves. It's probably at this time, if they waited a bit, they would have found something in their life changed, maybe got better for them. Maybe the thing that was worrying them just settled. And this has happened to me many times. And a big example of this was before I came here, before I traveled here to Syria, I had the big problem and I just became very, very sad. And uh, I had a very deep sadness. And I was thinking that this is the end. That my life cannot get better. My life will not get better. And at that time, I was wishing for death. I was thinking that my life can never get better. It will never resolve from this. Um, and I was very depressed and I couldn't imagine at that time that anything would change that or that it would get better. But this was the time that I saw my life change. I think sometimes these feelings that we have, these sadnesses and these periods that we go through where we think everything's just coming to an end, it's a time that something is changing and we find it difficult maybe. It's difficult to deal with this change, but maybe if we are patient, we will find something better. And I continue to have these experiences since that time. After when I thought everything was the end, was coming to an end, and that nothing would get better, I found my whole life changed so much. And I ended up here in another country. I ended up learning Arabic and learning the Quran. I ended up. Um, learning the Sharia and I ended up learning many things and so this sadness and this feeling that nothing will get better caused a big change in my life and although I thought the door was shut actually the door was opening I just didn't know it at that time the door another door was opening maybe not the one I thought because I couldn't imagine that at that time but 
Some of our bad experiences take us to places where we don't really know. And I think as human beings, not knowing where we're going can be scary sometimes. Um, but I find in each and every time, the more you feel in difficulty, the more you feel um, sad and in difficulty. At these times, if you put your trust in Allah and you ask Him, this is the time you will find the opening. And I just say this because each and every time this happens to me. You know, every time when I think that's the end, it's just the beginning of something else. And it's not always what I could, what I would expect. But um, this is why we're supposed to be patient. We're told to be patient um, in the times of adversities when we're experiencing difficulties. The Quran tells us that um, successful are the patient because we have to go through this experience, these negative feelings, these negative experiences, and then we'll come out and see something else and have a better experience normally. And I wanted to mention as well that there are many stories of people who've attempted to kill themselves and they didn't manage it. And you find that actually in the end, they were really grateful that they did not do it. Um, and this is the, the, I think, related to what I was saying, that you just need to have patience sometimes to see that maybe you think, for example, this person that you loved and they, they've gone, you think they are the only person. But they're, I mean, they, there's, maybe they will come back. Maybe it's just the time period they will go through. Or maybe there's something better. And if someone didn't pass an exam, for example, they can normally redo the exam. And maybe they will have a better grade than they would have done in the first time. They will learn more, maybe. Or maybe someone didn't get the job they wanted, or they lost their job. This may be a time they will get a better job after that. If we have these kind of expectations, um, if we are patient, we might see better things happening for us. But at least we won't, because um, killing oneself or wishing for death is the end. The end totally. People can't come back. So if someone has, um, I mean, can you imagine if someone killed themselves and then, I mean, obviously I don't know how people are in their graves or what they will, if they are able to think or have an idea. But imagine that they regretted that and they want to come back. They can't. It's the end totally. And no more opportunities. And now the bugs are eating them. So these things can't just be carried out like that. And uh, the people who, I think, I mean, I don't know any person who is still alive as they trying to attempt suicide, who's regretted staying alive. Most of them, I mean, all the people who I hear about who have attempted suicide, they don't regret um, not being successful. They're, they're glad they did not succeed because they found better things and better solutions to their problems than that. It was not the end. And and the other thing as well is, let's just talk about what is death, because this question has come to my mind quite a few times. I mean, should we really wish for death, or what should we wish for? Because I guess since I've been a Muslim, um, the, the more I began to understand what is death, the less I wish for death, because now I understand that death is not the end. I think when people wish for death, they're trying to wish away pain. They're wishing they're not in that situation. They're not in pain. They're not feeling negative feelings. Um, and they, they want to feel better and they want to have a better life. So what is this related to death? Why do people think that death is better than life? Because let's see, I mean, according to Islam, if you die, um, if you didn't have enough good deeds, if you had too many bad deeds, you might be punished in your grave, for example. And then after that, uh, maybe you don't have enough good deeds. Maybe you have some issues between people. You have some, you did, 
you have some disagreements and fights. So there's some sort of uh, issues between people, so you have to give them some of your good deeds, and they will have to give you something or like that. Or maybe you missed some prayer. Maybe you missed some fast, and you didn't catch them up. Maybe you will have a type of punishment. Or maybe you just need some more good deeds, just a few. Can you imagine that if you enter your grave, or if you, you die, and then you find that you didn't quite make it to paradise. You just needed just a few more good deeds, because your, your good deeds were just slightly below what, is, what was uh, needed. Maybe Allah will have mercy on us. But maybe if we just were able to increase that, maybe if we lived a bit longer, maybe we had a little bit more opportunity, we might just make it to enter the paradise. So instead of wishing for death, maybe we should just understand more. What is death? Death is leaving this world and going to another world. It's not the end. It's not the end of pain. It's not the end of uh, the situations that we're in because the things that we didn't do that we were supposed to do here will be asked about after death and we will be asked about all our lives after death how did we live our lives if we just try to end our lives all the time and we're just complaining all the time is this something that Allah will be pleased with um, is this going to save us and are we really going to wish for death when we know that there is a possibility we might end up in a punishment? Do we wish, wish for death like that? Are we in a big hurry to, to go to judgment day? Because if we really believe in judgment day, and if we really think that there is an afterlife, uh, then we have to, to plan for that more, rather than just wishing to go there straight away. For this season, I don't have this wish for death anymore. Rather, you know, if I wished for anything, I would just wish to disappear, to not be anything or anywhere. Because wishing for, wishing for death is wishing for going into your judgment day very quickly. So it's like saying that, well, I have all these good deeds and I'm totally ready, so I'm in a big hurry to go. I want to go there and just go to paradise for the world. That's a really good person. But I don't know if any of us have this confidence. Um, so, from what I see, if we look at the Quran as well, we know that Mary, Maryam alayhi salam, when she was in difficulty, she she it says that she shook the, the date palm, and because of the pain she was in, and I think because of the people who were coming after her, accusing her of adultery, when she was totally pure and innocent, she said, I wish I had died before this. But uh, this doesn't mean that she was wishing for death, really. I mean, this is something that, um, I think this demonstrates that, you know, maybe we do have a natural inclination when we are in difficulties, to think that death is the way out, is the option. But I don't think that Maryam was really wishing for death. She was, um, it was her way of uh, demonstrating how difficult that situation was for her. Um, and saying, you know, I wish I was something lost and forgotten. So the, the idea of you know, wanting to leave difficulties and thinking that death is the, an the, out the, the answer and the solution, I think this is, this is something that we all do when we're in difficult situations. And indeed, sometimes if we are sick, if we are really sick, or if we are really in a difficult situation, death can be the mercy for us. I mean, if we get upset, for example, if um, someone who we see is ill or suffering or a relative dies, but we forget as well that death can be a mercy. I mean, like I said, it's not always that way if we didn't do good deeds and if we 
hurry up, we're in a big hurry to go, and it's not our time. But for people who are sick, and you know, maybe they've become old, and they've done many good deeds, and they haven't done many bad things, um, you know, they're old now, and they're ill, um, death can be a mercy for them. Even I saw one woman um, some time ago, her son, throughout his life was ill. He was just in the bed and he had to take um, medicines and he was just on the these diaphragm for kidney problems all his life. And he was 13 years old, but he looked like he was seven years old. He was uh, very thin and this was his life just in the bed. And he did go to school, but most of the time he was in the doctors and the hospitals and so forth. So then he died when he was maybe 13, and she was very upset. But then I told her as well that I think that this is a mercy for him, because he hadn't done anything in this life, nothing wrong, he had no sin. He wasn't able to do sin because he was just in the bed. He didn't know about bad things. He was only 13 and he was just in the bed all the time. And he was in pain a lot and he was suffering in this life. So Allah took him. Um, was that bad? I think that was a mercy. I think he was in the paradise because there's no reason why he would not be. Why would he not be? And so death is a mercy. And maybe that's what we're looking for as well. We want this mercy, we want this peace. We see people when, if they are, they have died, they're like sleeping. We wish to just sleep and forget about all the problems and worries. But to do that, we have to have some good deeds. And we also make uh, opportunities in our life. Use our life to, for good opportunities. And the practice of the prophets, peace be upon him, peace be upon them, is that they didn't wish for death. I mean, I heard the story of Moses, peace be upon him, Musa, that when the angel of death came to him, he punched him in the eye. He did not want to, he did not want to, to go at that time to, to be taken in death because he wanted the more time on the earth to do more good deeds. And this was the practice of the, the, the Prophet. And the Sahaba, they, um, they, they would worry about their situation in the next life. So, yeah, this is the general, um, this is generally what I wanted to say that, you know, for as from the beginning, we we're told not to not to wish for death, but we're told that we should put our trust in Allah, and say this du'a. If we if we're really thinking about death, we can say this du'a, and put our trust in Allah that He will keep us alive so long as life is good for us, and take us when that He know when He knows that death is good for us. We don't know when is that, and we don't know what's about to happen to us, and we don't know you know, what could happen. And if someone, if anyone is having difficulties in their life, if they, are, if they have things that upset them that maybe they're not able to do, they have wishes and dreams they want to fulfill, or they've been hurt by things in this life, there are many options to change this rather than killing themselves. This is what we're asked to do. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it can be a sign of needing to change something in our life or a mental health problem or the need to, to address issues and make changes in our lives, maybe. And as the Quran tells us that the, pa the patient are the most successful and Patience is in the beginning of a calamity, in the beginning of a trauma. This is when we're asked to be patient. And with patience comes success and reward. We are rewarded for this patience. So all of this is not in vain.
and we will be rewarded for that. And I hope this uh, recording was useful. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.